today I'm going to be talking all about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, but spoilers. So if you have yet to see this movie, guys, first of all, what are you doing? This movie is amazing. Go see it. I've seen it twice now and it just gets better. Uh, so go see it, but then come back and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about everything that happened. We're going to talk about those post-credit scenes. We're going to talk about what this could mean for the future of the MCU. But of course, I'm also going to give a detailed spoiler review of this film. So there will be major plot points discussed. So just be warned. Before we get into it though, guys, if this is your first time here, I'd love it if you take one second and hit that subscribe button. If you want more content like this, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Okay, let's talk about it. Hey, Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Okay, so I have to admit, this is one of the few Marvel comics that I didn't know much about going into. Eternals is the other one, which I've definitely been researching, reading up on, and diving into. So I'm excited, really excited for that movie now that I know a lot more of the backstory. This one was one that just I never knew a lot about. So going into this, I was fairly blind. Um, of course, I'd seen Shang-Chi every now and then, especially in team-ups, but it just was something I never really dove completely into comic book wise. This movie though, guys, I loved it. If you saw my spoiler free review, then you know I gave this thing a five out of five. I thought it was so good. And it's funny, leaving the theater the first time after the press screening, I said to myself, okay, this is like a solid four and a half out of five movie. And then after sleeping on it and thinking about it and thinking about everything, I was like, no, any issues I have aren't enough to bring it down, to knock it down. This movie is a five out of five. It's top tier Marvel. It's so, so, so good. So I really, really enjoy it. One of my favorite origin stories as well. If you guys head to my letterbox, I'm Mama's Geeky over there. You can see my full MCU ranking. But yeah, this, this movie completely surprised me with just how fantastic it is. Let's talk about the fighting for a minute. The combination, you know, fighting, the, some of the fight scenes are just incredible. The entire bus scene is fantastic, but then you have that scene later on outside the underground fighting ring that is on like the scaffolding of the building. It's insane. It's beautiful. It's so well executed. The fight choreography is incredible. The cinematography during the fight scenes, how it would follow him or whoever is fighting at the moment, like it was so good. It's some of the best fight scenes. No, probably the best fight scenes in the MCU. I mean, I love Endgame. I love that final battle. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but this just is, it's so good the way it was done. Perfectly executed. So well done. Uh, loved the fights. I love that, that, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like, like feel to it too, when they incorporate that, like, especially the opening scene between his parents, uh, when they first meet and they first, they basically fall in love fighting, fight dancing. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. I loved that. That was one of my favorite parts of this movie as well. Just watching it and taking it all in and really seeing. It's just gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. And that's the thing about this movie too, is it is beautiful. It is visually stunning. The, there's some great shots at the beginning, but towards the end when they get to Talo, like, wow, this is basically this mystical, mythical land with these creatures that are gorgeous, right? And not only do you have the adorable little Morris with no face, which is like a choice, but then, <laughs> but he's so cute. But then you get the, like those horses and the, the on fire birds and like all those creatures are the big giant, like lion things. Like it's amazing. They're so beautiful. And for something that could have looked awful, I mean, that feels like a lot to tackle, especially CGI wise. Like it could have looked ridiculously stupid. And for me, I had I had no issues with that at all. I thought they absolutely looked gorgeous. Um, I, again, visually stunning, just had a blast looking at them and watching them, especially during that big fight scene when they're, they're fighting the dark one, whatever it was back there, which, okay, side note, listen, I'm going off on tangents here, guys, sorry. But this, the horror aspect, into this movie. I love horror movies. So I was very excited to see that the whole like literally sucking the souls out. How does that look gorgeous? And having the soul, uh, just like the, the glowing, like color changing ball, like that was, it's beautiful, beautiful. And those creatures are scary. That was crazy. They were so good. I was like, man, this is like 
creeping me out a little bit. Like, my eight-year-old was like, I'm not scared. And I was like, what are you talking about? This is terrifying. Um, I loved that part. And I love that story. And I love that, like, they sucked the souls out of those people and they're dead. Like, they're gone. It's not like they can come back. And speaking of beautiful shots, uh, one of the best villain, gray area villains that we've seen with Wenwu. I mean, Tony did a fantastic job with this character. I think he's chilling and he's so good and and I love it when a villain I mean villains are never the villain of their own story right so I love it when a villain has this you hear their side of the story and you get it and you understand why they're doing what they're doing even if it's really wrong and that is what he gave us in this movie but real quick the beautiful shot I want to talk about is as he's dying as he's getting his soul sucked out of him it's beautiful I mean I cried like Full on cried the first time I saw it. Uh, second time I just I got a little teary. It still it still hit me. I mean he's sitting there staring at his son. His son literally just told him, you know, your family needs you. Like stop. Like you are delusional. Like this is not. I understand you think you hear her back here. She's not there. Like mom's gone. And and he's just staring at me as he like gives him the rings. It's just like oh my heart. You know, um, just absolutely amazing. The the fight there too. Well, we're on this, and then I will go back to uh, Wenwu. But the fight between the dragon and that dark creature and just that entire thing. I mean, we were basically getting a kaiju fight here, right, guys? Like, this felt very much like a Godzilla movie in the end here, and I freaking loved it. I was so here for it. I loved seeing them go back and forth, trying to rip the soul. Like, opening his mouth and trying to get the soul out of the dragon was crazy. I should say her mouth, uh, the great protector, just pulling pulling the mouth open. And you see, you see the soul going through the throat. Like, that was crazy crazy I love that I thought it was beautiful so well done again we got like how do you, I never thought I would get a kaiju fight in a Marvel movie like come on guys but yeah back to Wenwu I mean listen he has this he's heartbroken right so his his wife has died he tried to change for the better uh, he tried to grow old, right? The rings give him eternal life. And, and so he was wearing them all the time. And then he took them off with, for his wife. He said he found a reason to grow old. And he had children with her. And then she's killed because of because of things he's done in the past, right? Because of, of the ten rings and because of who he was. And so he's absolutely devastated. And then he just channels that into training his son to be a killer, to get revenge on the people who killed his wife. And kind of pushes his daughter to the side. I mean, she says, just nod and stay in the background and he won't even notice you're there. Which is super sad, by the way. Super sad. Um, and the kids end up leaving for one reason or another, you know. They're gone. And now it's just him. And all he can do is channel his energy into this Ten Rings and, and into Talo. And he's trying to find a way and he's trying to figure stuff out. And that's when these creatures... Um, get to him, right? And make him think he hears his wife and he thinks he's going there to save the love of his life. Like that is what he thinks. He truly, truly believes that. And when you have a villain with a story like that, that you're like, I can totally relate to him. Like I get it. That's all he wants. And he's allowing himself to be duped. I mean, he's clearly a very smart man, right? He's very, very brilliant. And to know, he's got to know some way this isn't true, but he's allowing himself to feel that way because that's what he wants, right? It's his greatest desire, which is what they say in Talo that these creatures do. They make people think um, that they that behind there is their greatest desire, and that's just to have his wife back. He just wants his family back, and that's so sad, you know? He says, even even to uh, Razor Fist, he says, they'll come back um, when when I bring her home. So he knows his children are going to come back to him. And and he just, that's all he wants is his family together. And so I think that's why it kind of really stunned him when, um, uh, when Shang-Chi said to him, your family needs you. Like, come on. And he's like, oh. But that, of course, that's right when the guy breaks out and all hell breaks loose because, you know, that's how it works. And he steals his soul and it's very, very sad. Um, but I, I love that. And then let's talk about the chemistry Okay, between Simu and Aquafina, they are so good together. They are so funny. They have this crazy, like, comedy that you're just like, what? And Aquafina is so good. Every, like, all of her lines throughout the thing is just hilarious. Uh, like, so many moments are funny for her. Like, I, I just, I'm trying to think of, like, all my, I was going to say I've got to pick a favorite one, but it's, like, impossible. She's so, so funny. I just love the whole thing about the name. Like, you change your name from Shang, from Shang to Sean. Like, what? What? 
where's your like sense? Where's your thoughts on name changes? You know, that's like going from Michael to Michael. Like it's just funny to me. She's so hilarious. The whole beef thing too. Like the vegetarian or beef vegetarian. Well, we're not a vegetarian. So beef because that's all you have. Like she's just so good in her delivery, but I love the two of them together. I honestly loved the entire cast together. I thought they were all phenomenal. Each and every person did a fantastic job. And speaking of the cast, one thing that I wish was kept a surprise uh, is Ben Kingsley. Um, it was great to see him back. Of course, he was there at the premiere, and then they said the cast of Shang-Chi, and they had him up there with them, and it was kind of like, oh, man, I really wish I hadn't known that Ben Kingsley was going to be a part of this. Now, I didn't know he would be such a big part of it, and I thought he was great and phenomenal and hilarious, and I love how they just were like, yeah, Iron Man 3, that, tw that twist was weird and not, it didn't work. Some people think it worked. I don't think it worked. Um, I'm one of those people that didn't like it. So they talk about it. And not only do they talk about it with Ben Kingsley, but they also talk about it when we has a conversation about it. Like they didn't know my name. They called me the Mandarin after a chicken dish. Like people were afraid of an orange, you know, it's just, it's funny. I like that they joke that I like that they're able to joke about it themselves. You know, Marvel's able to make fun of themselves, which is something I love about them. They do that a lot in their movies and shows even as they're trying to um, fake us out, but also like, like include stuff. Cause like I'm thinking about um, Pietro, right? Fake Pietro back to that. They make jokes about that. So it's just, you know, like I was dying in the street like a chump because people are like, how did he just get shot and die? You know, Marvel is very good at doing that. And I think they do it in a really brilliant way. So, so calling back to the Iron Man three Mandarin twist, whatever it was, was great. And having Ben Kingsley be such a major part of this was great. He's such a joy to watch and he's so good as Trevor Slattery. He's so funny. I really, really enjoyed that as well. So, I mean, the story overall is really fantastic. It, my biggest issue with the movie is that like, yeah, it's a little long and it's a little slow in the middle, but like it's an origin story and you have to have that stuff because they have to explain stuff. Didn't take away from it for me at all. I thought the rings were really cool. The fight scenes were really cool. I love the way the rings work. And then the post credit scenes, you guys, wow. Even especially watching it after a second time. I mean, I am so excited. So like the biggest questions are really who, who are the rings beaconing, right? My guess is either Fin Fang Foom um, because he's tied to the to the rings in the comics, or uh, it could possibly be something to do with the Celestials, which would tie into the Eternals, right? Because they're apparently an alien technology that's over thousands of years old, so that would make sense. Also, how is Bruce Bruce again? He's obviously found a way to change himself back and forth. He's decided to change himself back and forth. Does this have a tie into She Hulk? Like, what is the point? Um, why, like, why is he doing this? I don't know, but I'm excited. They didn't mention Doctor Strange at all. So what's going on there? Uh, Wong seems to be working alongside, uh, Ab Abomination. So how did that happen? Is this a different timeline? The answer is probably no. I don't care. I want it to be a different timeline because we're in the multiverse and that's what I want. Uh, they said phase four is all about the multiverse. I think it'd be really cool if later on, maybe in uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, we learn, oh, this was like an alternate timeline. That'd be so cool. If like Katie and chung come through at, from a different timeline. Who knows? That would be fun. Uh, but I, I don't think that's the case, but that would be fun. Uh, I do think the beacon is reaching out probably most likely to Fin Fang Foom um, or the Celestials, and it's going to tie into the Eternals that way. I'm fine with either one personally, even though I really just want that other timeline. Uh, I thought the karaoke scenes were funny. Uh, I like that, of course, they're singing like Disney songs, and then they actually sang My Husband and I's song, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. Uh, that was our wedding song, so I was... It was kind of exciting to see that in a Marvel movie that had me happy. Um, and then the second final scene, um, post credit scene, people are talking about the widows. Now there are two actresses in that final scene that are actually, yes, they are widows. Does that mean they are using the same actresses? Possibly. Does it mean she's training all widows? Possibly. Does it mean she's training some widows? Possibly. I mean, we don't know. Or is this an alternate timeline? Ho, oh, where they didn't become widows and they were recruited into this new 10 rings. I don't know. I don't know, but that would be amazing. Um, the, the underground fight scenes were all phenomenal. I mean, listen, like I said, the fight scenes are amazing. 
It's hilarious. It's so funny the way they turned, they put, weaved in all this humor. It's fantastic. The cast has amazing chemistry. I mean, Simo is incredible as Shang-Chi. I'm so excited to have him as a part of the MCU now. He's phenomenal. I can't wait to see more. And from what Wong says in the post credit scenes, there will be more. They, like, I mean, Hulk even says, Bruce, I should say, even says, Welcome to the circus. Now, I did see that the director, uh, Destin, he did say this was on purpose, did not say Avenger. So, again, is this a different timeline where there aren't Avengers? I don't know. I know. I'm grasping at straws. I really, really want to be in the multiverse already, if you haven't noticed. But also, are the Avengers even a thing anymore? Like, Tony's gone. I mean, what's going on here? I don't know. I was super hyped to see Captain Marvel in this. I thought she was a great little cameo at the end. Is she leaving because of secret invasion? That's very possible. Uh, you know, she says, oh, I gotta go. Is it because of secret invasion? Is it because of the Marvels? I mean, listen, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think down below? What are your post credit scene theories? And what did you think of this movie? Did it deliver for you? I mean, for me, again, humor, heart, um, a fantastic villain, right? Like one that makes you really feel for him. I mean, Wenwu is amazing. Probably one of my favorite villains of the MCU, if I'm being completely honest with myself. Um, we've got amazing post credit scenes. We've got great CGI. We've got an incredible soundtrack. We've got a great score. I mean, the main thing, like I said, is yeah, it's a little long, I guess. And, and there's some moments that maybe feel like, oh, that's a lot of talking. Like it's a little slow right now, but it's so good. It's so good. I loved this movie from beginning to end and especially even more the second time around. Uh, we know that this movie takes place after Endgame, quote unquote Endgame, if we're in a different timeline, maybe something else kind of happened. I mean, obviously the Thanos snap happened. They do talk about um, people disappearing, right? We live in a world where half the population can disappear. Yes. Um, but I don't know. I'm here for it. I thought this was great. I can't wait to see it again. This is one that really holds up. One of Marvel's best uh, origin stories. I think it's right up there. It's on par with Black Panther. They go back and forth. I really, really, really enjoyed it a lot. And uh, again, you guys let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on more uh, movie reviews, trailer reactions, celebrity interviews, all that fun stuff. And you can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Mama's Geeky over there. M-A-M-A-S-G-E-E-K-Y. Thank you so much to all of my monetary supporters, my members here on YouTube, as well as my patrons. If you haven't joined yet, please consider doing so. We have some really awesome perks, including a month Zoom meeting where we get to talk face to face. Thank you again to everyone who supports me.